Big Block Mike's 1968 Chevrolet Corvette barn find. This Corvette went into hiding after a brief chase with the police more than 40 years ago. Can we get some photographs just the way it is, just right this second? Rescue of a legend. Every town has a mystical car story from which urban legends are born. We tracked down one. Rumor had it this hot rod four-speed big block Corvette went into hiding to keep the owner from being arrested. We jumped at the chance to document the barn frying Corvette. Well, we get the 427 emblems on the hood. Yeah. Look at the 427 yeah. emblems on the hood. Oh, yeah, it's wow. got 427 on the side and stuff. Oh, but, uh, wow. Uh, uh, like the vents on the side, I got the some chrome pieces that go in there too and stuff. I think my heart just accelerated. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Urban legends have a way of surviving the years. In car guy circles, urban legends can take a somewhat true story and stretch it until it becomes simply unbelievable. The legend was true. All right, you're not going to believe this. A 1968 Corvette convertible 427, four speed, hidden in a North Alabama barn slash garage after a police chase. What kind of folklore is that? The doors on the ramshackle barn open for the first time ever to anyone outside of a small family circle. 1968 Corvette awaited with a fat 427 and a four speed. The story began in 1974 when our hero, Mike, aka Big Block Mike, needed a car. He was a high school teen with Corvette fever working at a part time job at the SH Green Stamp store. Lucky for Mike, a dealership that specialized in Corvette sales was temptingly located close to his job. Stern negotiations and $2,900 later, the dealership pronounced him into a lifetime marriage to this 1968 Corvette. It's good to be king. Can you imagine growing up in a small town as the Corvette guy? Spending your senior year of high school driving a big block Corvette convertible is inconceivable for most of us. Could you be trusted at that age to not smash a loud pedal? We wouldn't be. Mike was wired for speed. He'd race anytime, anywhere. One night at the local cruise haunt, Mike was challenged by four guys in four cars. Usually, one hot rod would call him out and hand over his hat, but this time, four were ready to run. They drove to a secluded area, and Mike lined them up, one after the other, and took their ice cream money. A brief monetary gain for the fun of racing. That same willingness to rip and roar up and down the road would eventually catch up to Mike. The last encounter running from the police was enough to put up the hot rod for good. That forced him to put the Corvette in the barn for the better part of 40 years. Mike was afraid the barn was going to fall in on top of the Corvette. Five years after we first saw it, we were invited back for the recovery and rescue of the 68 big block Corvette convertible. It was time to move the old vet to a better place. This is the ultimate automotive excavation. We had to be there. Big Block Mike's family and friends jumped into action to pull the Corvette from the barn. The brakes were locked up. The rear end, pause of traction, was stuck as well. It wasn't easy. They installed a set of uh, barred rubber, replaced the flat polyglass all the way around to get the thing to roll up on the trailer or slide it. So it worked? That tire did? It's on. It ain't rolled yet, but it's on. <laughs> <laughs> The 1970s were all about customizing. Mike was quick to add an aftermarket steering wheel. A set of first-gen Camaro seats replaced the buckets the Corvette was born with. Oh yeah, and some Prager SS mag wheels. Options. We don't need options. The only options we could spot on the barn banished vet were the 427 ground pounder and the removable hard top. This muscle machine was made to run without a lot to worry about. Manual windows almost go without saying. When you consider the lack of power steering and power brakes, so leave that off too. How about the famous Corvette tilt and telescopic steering wheel? That was a pretty cool option that was offered in a, only a couple of GM cars in 1968. Not this time. If the turn signal stalk wasn't required, it may not have been option on this vet either. What you don't see on the vet are the side pipes. This red rocket was equipped with those big exhaust pipes right under the doors on each side of the car. Mike was quick to note that you could sure as heck burn your leg if you were wearing shorts getting in and out of that thing. He don't remember when, but at some point he pulled them off while it was in the barn. The heavy duty 1970s era clutches made a workout of just a small commute. 
This one decided to stay in place and the 411 Positive Traction rear did its job well and would not under any circumstances let those rear tires move. It has been in that position for 33 years. Why unlock now? The original 4-speed took the side of the clutch and it refused to move. No shifty business going on between those seats. The 68 Corvette now shows 86,000 original miles. Looking at the body, it looks beat up. What happened to this thing? Well, there's some stories you don't know. You know Mike ran through tires like a hot knife through butter, so he had to replace them pretty often. The last trip to the tire store resulted in the quarter panel being ripped off. Seems like the mechanic that day didn't do his job too well. He left the lug nuts off the left rear. When Mike took off, the left rear tire came loose ripping half the quarter panel away, sending the tire careening down the road into another vehicle. Launching the wheel and tire 60 feet up into the air. Luckily no one was hurt besides the Corvette. Fiberglass was everywhere. A replacement quarter panel was found and put on, but this made the red Corvette a spectacle because the quarter panel was black. His insurance didn't pay to have the car repainted. It was easy to spot. Running around town in his big block Corvette with a black quarter panel. And easy to find if you're running from the police. The cops knew about the red Corvette with the black quarter panel. He was notorious. The only problem with everyone knowing you drive the fastest car in town is that everyone knows you drive the fastest car in town. People talk, and during the 1970s, the Citizens Band radio craze was everywhere. CBs were the latest really cool thing. Then, the police got them. That is not good for a young hot rodder with a big block bat. Which way did he go? After outrunning local law enforcement embarrassingly bad, southbound, big block Mike turned around and met them again, this time northbound. This stunt angered the cops even more, as Mike's friend, listening on a newly acquired police scanner, overheard. Could we say it was another guy in a red Corvette convertible? No. That small town thing came back to haunt Mike very quickly. So that left one option, hide the car. So he did. Mike stashed the red bet with the black quarter panel in the barn. His brother Daryl suggested they paint the black quarter panel red and maybe they could get away with it without being hauled in for evading the police. It seemed like the Corvette was jinxed. More trouble. He had the bumpers pulled off the paint of the quarter panel and rear section. Unfortunately, a quick run to the parts store resulted in a Corvair smashing into the tail panel of the vet. The damage was enough to make you nauseous. The battered Corvette found its way back to the barn where it sat untouched for 40 years. Well we got it loaded up and it's heading to a new destination. A safer building where maybe it'll see the street again. Yeah, yeah, I just thought I'd take a little cruise. I think I figured out what was wrong. The, uh, somebody left the lights on. Hot rod, period correct. The aftermarket steering wheel was cool. Now, not so much. Are you here? <laughs> we had to improvise, find a way to get the locked up brakes on the Corvette to move. Sliding off the trailer in this manner seemed to be the best option. What do you think? Don't try this at home. Results may vary. The 68 Mustang hidden in the shadows of the garage helped hold the Corvette as the trailer pulled away from underneath. 
rear brakes and all the transmission on the Corvette are frozen up. I tell you what, he was always a person for speed. That's all he wanted was speed. And he'd race anything in this car, no matter what it was. A look at the fat motor 427 under the hood of the 1968 Corvette. There was some antifreeze coming out. Various animals lived inside and outside the Corvette through the decades. You can see the damage they caused. It's kind of nasty, but I believe it'll all clean up. A team of experts surrounded the engine bay trying a few different procedures to get the engine to turn over. A set of borrowed rally wheels and tires were used to transport the vet. Instantly, the car looked better. The damage caused by that core of air bumping into the tail panel didn't do the Corvette any favors. Eighteen thousand six hundred and thirty Corvette convertibles were built for nineteen sixty eight. Big Block four twenty seven Corvettes received this special hood in nineteen sixty eight. The L eighty eight versions, only eighty built in sixty eight, needed an even taller hood to clear that engine's high rise aluminum intake. Paint code nine eighty three tells us this sixty eight vet was originally painted British green. British green was the most popular color on vets in nineteen sixty eight. We searched the car for any trace of British green paint, but came up empty. We'd love to have this Corvette in our garage, and if we'd have bought it when we were 17, we'd have hung on to it as many years as Mike has. He may catch some grief from internet trolls who want to say what they would have done with the car and how they would have took better care of it. Mike did the best he could with what he had, and he still got it. I gotta applaud him for that. A lot of people give up on their Corvette dreams. They sell it, put a little money in their pocket, or go buy a Honda or a Toyota, something that gets better mileage, something more dependable. But Mike didn't want that. He wanted the Corvette when he was young. He still wants it now. He's done the best job he can to keep it safe. It may not have been the way you would have treated it, but I'm not going to argue with him. He held on to something for a long time, and he still has hopes of fixing it up. The family was nice enough to take it, put it in a safer place. And maybe, just maybe, he'll get to drive it one more time. And when he does, I bet he's going to leave a set of black marks as far as you can see. And I bet he don't care if the police come after him. Life's too short. You gotta live a little sometimes. And living with the big block Corvette, convertible, four speed in red, that's living, if you ask me.
Stay tuned. Like and subscribe. Junkyard Life. The story beneath the rust. I'm Jody Potter. Thanks for watching.